Well, like I said, good evening, and welcome to tonight's edition of Word Wednesday. We trust and hope and pray uh, that you're having a good week so far and that uh, everything is going according to plan. And if it's not, guess what? You're still a success because you're making it. And it's just that simple. Why? Because you're God's child. And as long as you are a person who knows that God is your source, he is not your resource, he is your friend until the very end, he is your savior, He's your provider, your protector, your healer, your guide, all these many different things that he is, you're going to come out on top. And it's good that you know that Jesus Christ is real and that he is in the world even this day. Things might be crazy. Things may not be going the way that you want for them to go. You may not be experiencing or seeing the things that you want to see or thought you would see at this point in your life. But guess what? You're still in a good position for God to bless you. So let's do this before we get into this on tonight. If you're there by yourself, you can say it to yourself. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, it's going to be all right. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, it's going to be all right. Now take your cell phone and point it to yourself like you taking a selfie and tell yourself, self, in case you forgot, here's a reminder, it's going to be all right. So we greet you tonight in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is our God and through him we do valley. This is the day that the Lord has made. I do rejoice and I'm glad in it and you should too. It is because of him, excuse me, that we're still alive. It's because of him that we're still yet in the land of living. It's because of him that our defeats, our downfalls, our mistakes, our sins, our iniquities did not take us out because God is a merciful God. So we thank everybody for joining us here on Facebook and on Instagram Live as well. Good to see you there, Sister Becky. I see your name there. Thank you so much for joining us. Please comment like share on tonight's facebook live thank you all for sharing it with people thank you all for commenting so that i know that you're out there that you're receiving what god has said unto me and it is blessing you and encouraging you helping you pushing you pulling you prodding you whatever you need for god to do we believe that it does that in your life but i always want you to be encouraged don't hang your head down if something untoward happens happens to you you don't have to hang your head down because you're God's child. And if you're God's child, you're a winner. And I can't say any plainer than that. The Bible says he makes us victorious. That means that we're winners, champions. All oh, that's the same thing, that you come out on top, that you come out smelling like a rose, that you're the comeback kid. <laughs> my dad had to remind me of that and I had to rehearse that into my ears recently based upon some information that I got in the situation uh, with the job. He said, Reuben, he, he said this many, many years ago. He said, Reuben, man, you know as a comeback kid, son. He said, so you're in a good position. So matter where, no matter where you are on this evening, you're in a good place. Even if it's not the place you want it to be. Even if it's, if it's uncomfortable. Even if it's not in your plan. It wasn't in your design, your template. It's a good place. Why is it a good place? Because it's a God place and God is going to bring you where he wants you to be as well because the bible says this that man or woman they make their plans but their steps or what god what god wants to do is what's going to really come to pass so we're god's children we're not our own we didn't call ourselves to do this god brings us into his family he saves us he adopts us as being his and we are completely and totally his and we will forever be his all we have to do is just believe that jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever and that he is the savior of the world so child of god you be encouraged out there continue to fight the good fight of faith hold on to what you've got which means hold on to god the father god the son and god the holy spirit because listen people of god better is always possible better is always out on the horizon making its way to you and who knows tomorrow could just be that day for you if you put jesus christ into your life so I'm, I'm encouraged on tonight that's why i always try to encourage people on wednesdays because you know we hear the word on sunday morning and we're fired up and ready to go for the week and then monday morning hip hits and it's like woo we and by the time maybe it's the wednesday you're like oh my god man what is really going on so we call tonight worry wednesday because we hear the word of god to help push us on through the rest of the week until we're able to assemble together to hear the word of god if you desire to give to our church uh, you or uh, support our ministry you can do so through www.gtcfc.org slash giving 
or you can also do so via Cash App, all capital letters, capital G, capital T, capital C, capital L, and capital C as well. So we thank God for you on tonight and your being here. Hey, Cousin Bueller, good to see you out there tonight as well. She's always sweet and supportive of what we're doing, so we thank God for her as well. But we appreciate all of you there, members of the fellowship. We thank God for you and you being there online. As we stated, you can follow us here on Facebook, you can follow us on YouTube, and you can follow us on Instagram as well, at The Fellowship BMT is how you can find us. And we are on those three uh, platforms, so we thank God for you. I also encourage you to visit www.destiny-momentum.com. Uh, Pastor Lindsay has an awesome event planned for the month of October. I believe today is the last day to get the early bird special uh, <laughs> for those tickets. It's going to be in Houston, Texas. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be inspiring. It's going to be inspiring. It's going to be uplifting. And it's going to be a move of God in that place. Trust me. So you don't want to miss it right there in Houston, Texas. You can find more details about that event at www.destiny-momentum.com. So we thank God for you on tonight. You say that every time. Yes, because I'm grateful uh, for you being here. I'm grateful uh, that you tune in, that you tune in to our Word Wednesday. Uh, to hear the word of God because God is still speaking. He still has the answer to our problems. He still has the answers to our questions and our challenges as well. So come on, let's pray. Let's say to God, our Father, I thank you for this time of fellowship and around your word. I thank you, God, for your people who will hear this message both now and in the future. Heavenly Father, I thank you first for this opportunity to share with these, your people. Now, God, I ask you to take out of myself and to be less of me and more of you. Less of me and more of you. Less of me to those all of you and none of me. Not unto my name, but unto your name, O God, be all the glory, all the honor, all the majesty, all the dominion, and all of the power. Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight for boldness and accurate articulation of speech. Thank you for perfect utterance. I thank you, O God, and no sinners of my own as you, in other words, the Spirit of God would dictate. Heavenly Father, we thank you for answering our question. Give us a new perspective, a new outlook, a new vantage point. Give us direction. Where we're lost, O Heavenly Father God, to their troubled mind, give peace and a plan. To those who have anxiety, give your joy unspeakable, your peace that passes all understanding. Heal their broken heart, heart and bind up their wounds. Heal their broken body. Heal their troubled soul. Bring that one and one back to you, O Heavenly Father God. And God, we thank you most importantly for everybody to get saved on tonight's spirit, for healed, delivered. Add it to your local church, Golden Triangle Christian Fellowship Church, and the Lord's Church Worldwide. I'll agree with that prayer. Said amen. Amen. So once again, we thank God for you all to know. We appreciate your presence. Please share this Facebook Live right now uh, to your news feed. Tag somebody or send it through messages to somebody who's going to need uh, the word on tonight because we all need to hear the word of God. We all need the word of God. You'll never get too big where you don't need the word of God. I want to invite you to go to Genesis chapter 22 and verse number 20. I mean, Genesis tw chapter 22 and verse number 8. Genesis 22 and verse 8. I know I encourage you uh, to get a good Bible, get a good paper Bible. They also have, of course, it's a Thompson Chain Bible. They also have it uh, in the digital platform as well. You heard me talking about uh, the concordance. Uh, you see that word, the revised concordance. Uh, keys to topical study. So if you want to study on a particular particular topic, you can just look it up, and it'll be in dark print, and it'll have all those scriptures with that particular word uh, in in those sentences. You can find it uh, there as well. It's called in this Thompson Chain Bible. I like Thompson Chain. I told you that's my favorite. You'll find it there at the back, towards the back of the Bible. This is page number eighteen sixteen uh, that I'm on right now. And that's the A's. And it starts on page number uh, 1813 is where it actually starts. So it's a good Bible tool. If you ever want to do a word study, a topic study on anger, um, anything, any other word that you can think of that may be found in the Bible, it's a good tool for you to have to get to know the Word of God for yourself, to read the Word of God for yourself. We encourage all children of God to read the Bible from Genesis all the way through Revelation. Just start. And read at your own pace. Someday you may read a lot of it. Oh, because you should get in that zone and it's real interesting. Oh, you like what you're reading. Then some days you may not read as much. That's okay. The most important thing is that you read it all the way through. Why, Pastor? It's important that you know what the Bible, what the Word of God says for yourself. 
that's important, okay? Because nobody can take that away from you when you read it for yourself, when you know what it says for yourself. You're not that good a reader? Okay, I hear you. You can listen through the Bible. The Bible most Bible apps have a, a version where they'll read it to you, and you can listen to it. You can go on YouTube and listen to it, but I want to encourage you uh, to do that in your own personal time as well. Just like when you're writing, you can listen to it. You got some time, and time has passed. You sit there waiting, take your phone out. Go to your Bible app and just start. And then mark your page. Come back to it the next day. Read a little bit. Read, read till you read. And okay, I'm going to pick up the next day. And trust me, and you'll finish it. They have, of course, different reading plans and all that kind of stuff. That's up to you if you want to follow one or not. But just read it from Genesis all the way through Revelation. That way you understand <laughs> why Jesus came and all the different things that were going on in the Bible. I tell you, the Bible is not a boring book keep saying that and if, if you ever read it you'll come back and say yeah pastor you're right it is not a boring book because i'm trying to tell you it's all kind of stuff in that bible that god talks about and then he shows us and he allows us to see uh through human history what was going on and what all he had to put up with and deal with to get our elder brother our messiah the anointed one jesus the christ here on the planet all right so genesis chapter 22 verse number eight reading to you from the king james version of the bible and it says and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. So tonight I want to talk about God can. Once again, God can. What can God do? He can do anything. So once again, God can. And you should know by now that he can't if he if, if you don't remember or don't know i'm gonna show you in the word of god scripture text that points it out turn to numbers 23 and verse number 19 Our objective is to remind us that god is not ever or will be limited to our ability in other words god is not limited to what we can do he only thing that limits god is our belief that's the only thing that limits god with, with, with men it may be impossible, but with God, all things are possible. It does not matter your situation, how bleak it may be, how dire it may look, bad it may look, unfruitful it may look, unprogressive, not growing, not moving forward. doesn't matter to God. It's not too hard for God. This is what I like to say. There's nothing that's too hard for God. There's also nothing that's too easy <laughs> for God. It, it, it Say it again. There's nothing that's too hard for God. There's also nothing that is too easy for God. Somebody need to type that in the comments so it'll be proof there so they need to know that there's nothing too hard for God. There's also nothing that is too easy for our God. And, and I can't make it or break it down any plainer than that for you. Now to be true and to be for real, God is not going to do what he gives us power to do but what we depend on God to do, he can do that and he can do much more when we believe him. Scripture says it like this, Jesus goes to his hometown. You know about your hometown. You want to show out in your hometown. You want to stunt. You want to be impressive. You want to show off. You want to show out. You want to show up like that. Just like, yeah, for the hometown, for the home team. He said he did no great work there because of their unbelief, save for a few miracles. In other words, what he could have done, what he wanted to do was limited because the people of God, his own hometown people, didn't believe that he was who he said he was. Even though I'm sure... His reputation preceded him, even though I'm sure the miracles, the signs, the wonders that he performed preceded him. But yet and still, he did no great work there because of their unbelief. Not because he couldn't, not because he didn't want to, not because he didn't have it to do, not because he didn't have the power, not because he did not have the desire. It is because people did not believe. That's why Pastor and I are always talking about it's important that you believe. You have to believe God for yourself. Nobody can believe God for you. They can believe God with you, and we call that agreement, but nobody can believe God for you. You have to believe God for yourself, and you have to hold on to what God told you, what he said to you. That's why we encourage you to read the Bible so you know what the promises of God are. It's not as weird that you be sick. It's not as weird that you have disease. It's not as weird that you be broke. It's not as well that you don't have a good job, that you don't have a nice and safe place to stay. That is not the will of God. Scripture says he gives us all things richly to enjoy. Oh, Pastor, I thought you had to take a vow of poverty. That's not in the Bible. 
That's not the Bible. That's that's some man-made religion says that. And it's not Christianity that it comes from either. Ooh, Reverend Samson, you went there? Yes, I did. Yeah. That's why I say read the Bible to you and for yourself. Read the Bible for yourself so you'll know. Well, Pastor, the Bible said that Jesus said the foxes have holes and the son of man have no, and the birds have nests, but the son of man have no place to lay his head. This is true. He did say that. But he was talking about where he was. He couldn't find any accommodation to stay. Because the scripture says it clearly. They came to Jesus. John the Baptist's disciples came to him asking, where do you live? And he said, follow me. And he took them to that place that he lived in, in Capernaum. So Jesus was not poor. He wasn't outdoors. And, well, let me, let me go on it since I done ended up there. Let me, let me talk about that so you know that I know what the word of God says. Now, I've been a male all of my life. And I've been in some dice games all of my life. I mean, in, in my life. Not all of my life, but in, in my life, in my younger years. So, I've never seen anybody gamble, any men gamble over clothes. But scripture says it distinctly and clearly that they gamble for Jesus' garment at the cross. They're not going to gamble for some cheap garment. Because they were going to tear it up. You know, everybody take a piece. You take this. No, no, no. It's too nice to tear it up. No, no, we're going to shoot. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna cast lots. That's what casting lots means. Shooting dice in that particular uh, instance. We call it shooting dice. Gambling for it. It wasn't a cheap garment. So that's another proof text that he was not poor. It also said that Judas carried the bag. Judas was over the money. That's why he Jesus knew that he was a thief because he was stealing from him. He was not poor. God does not want you poor you don't have to stay poor if you don't government assistance nobody judges you you don't have to stay there thank god that he provides in the word of god he tells us that you know when you have a harvest leave some of the corners for the widows and the orphans and the less fortunate that's from the bible that's a bible principle but that's not a place that god wants you to have to stay in really oh yes really really better is always possible Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven is a beautiful place. Heaven is a safe place. God wants you to live in a safe place. It's not his will that you have. You can't go to sleep at night because they're shooting outside your home. That is not the will of God. Well, I've been waiting on a sign. I need to move. That's your sign. That's your... Uh, that's your sign. <laughs> you looking for a sign. That's it. Well, I just, but that's been going on all the time. You're not as young as you were. You can sleep through that. You can't sleep through that now. A pastor, God want me to move my big age? He wants you to be saved. So if he's calling you to it, saying, saying to you to do that, he'll provide for it. Look at this, Numbers 23, 19. It says, God is not a man. Let's stop right there, even though that's a comma to separate the clause. Let's that, that, stop right there. God is not a man. He is to be sure he is male, but he's not a man. That means he's not like your daddy. Your uncle, your cousin, your brother, your stepbrother, your stepfather, your coach, any male figure in your life. That's not who he is. God is not a man that he should lie. Oh. God don't tell us to no. He keeps a promise. If, if he makes a promise, excuse me, he's going to keep it. If he tells you something, he's going to bring it to pass. It might not come to pass the way that you know it. And what I've learned is a lot of times God will bring what he has said to pass and it, we don't recognize it either. Ooh, that is good right there. Teach the night, Holy Ghost. It, in other words, it made the, the appearance of it, the manifestation of it. I don't even like using that word now because, you know, everybody in the world is trying to use that word to make it seem like you just believe something out of thin air and it's not the way that that works. But many times God will bring what he has said to pass and we forgot that he said it. Or it doesn't look like the picture that we had in our minds. Or it doesn't look like the picture that we drew ourselves. Or it doesn't look like the movie that we played in our heads. Oh, I'm a witness. I'll, I'll say amen to that myself because I, I know it to be true. He never fell short of his word like grandma and him say. That's why grandma said every time she say, Ruben, she said, you got to follow the leader. Who the leader, Ruben? God. And you got to stay in the trail. What that means? Stay in the way that he walked. It said, God is not a man that he should lie. That's, that's enough to say the word right there. 
He's not like your husband that let you down. He's not like your wife that let you down. Ooh, I need to say that too. He's not. You can depend on God. Well, Pastor, I depended on God and, and I, I, I fell on my face. Did you really fall on your face? Let's go there for a moment. Or did you feel like you fell on your face? Because there is a difference. Because I told you, perception, I've said this from time to time, perception is not always your best friend. No, God got in between you and the concrete so you wouldn't bust your brains out. That's how you were able to stay in your right mind. So you may have felt like you fell in your, you know, on your face, but you didn't fall on your face because God, he, he softened the fall. Oh, I know them. I'm, I know I'm teaching good right there. He, he, God softened the fall. How's he softened the fall? Because he'll get in between you and the full impact of what's going on. How do you think you haven't cracked up yet? How do you think you haven't lost your mind? You're not somewhere in, 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 in the crazy house on the fifth floor that they be talking about. You haven't been identified as 5150. That's crazy. It's because God softened the blow. He got in between you and what was coming at you. Well, show me scripture. Scripture says that God is a sun, shield, and buckler. Anytime you're talking about a shield, you're talking about a buckler, you're talking about defense. Something getting between you and the blow. You're still going to feel that the impact of the blow. It's just not going to be a death blow. Pastor, that, yep, that's how. Well, Pastor, I just, you know, man, it took a lot out of me. I did not say it did not impact you. I did not say you didn't go through nothing. And I'm not trying to belittle what you went through, but you made it through because God can and will deliver his people. Because I told you, God is not limited to our ability. He's not limited to what we can do, or nor is he limited to what we cannot do. I told you early in the lesson, all God is looking for is some belief. And he'll take whatever, like I literally pastor said, God will take whatever faith you got and work with that. It's like he'll come to your house and tell he tell he gonna cook for you and he gonna work with whatever you got in the refrigerator and whatever ain't in the refrigerator or in your cupboard or in your spice rack, he gonna make up the difference. And I can't give you a clean or better picture. Because that's how God is, that's how he works. Hey, look at this, look at this. Okay, number 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Why? Because there's no lie in him. He is full of truth. And glory is what the gospel according to John chapter 1 says. He says, we beheld him full of truth and glory. Neither the son of man that he should repent. God does not change his mind. Mistakes don't change his mind. Sin don't change his mind. Iniquities don't change his mind. What happens to you doesn't change his mind. Sometimes you go through stuff like, ooh, the Lord ain't going to use me after I done went through this. Baby, your, the Lord will use you and that to help his people. And I'm a witness. Say it again. The Lord will use you and that stuff that you went through to help people. You know, I had this strange, strange, strange opportunity one time. And a young, young, male, that I, young male that I knew was going through some stuff. And, and he couldn't understand what was going on. But I was able to explain to him what was going on. Because of the divorces that I went through, and if I and I, I and the, the light bulb came on, it was scary at the same time. And I said, you know, if I went through what I went through to be able to explain to you at your young age what's going on, it was worth it. Because we, I say it all the time, we never know what all the Lord is doing. I didn't say that God likes our suffering. I didn't say that he likes our pain, that he likes our anxiety, that he likes the challenges that we go through. Nope. But it's true. It's a suffering ministry. And say, please him to bruise his son. Oh, 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 that's heavy. But he did it for us. <laughs> he didn't do it for him. He didn't do it for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ ain't need no savior. Savior God ain't need no savior. We needed a savior. We the one needed to be saved. That's why I said, neither the son of man that he should repent. God not going to change his mind. And people thank God, thanks be to God that people can't change his mind. People may try to. People may tell you that. Oh, child, God ain't going to use you because he don't, he don't use people. I, not that the one that I serve. I like that song from back in that God uses ordinary people. People just like you and me willing to do as he commands. That's still who he uses. People who are willing. He say, neither the son of man that he she repent. Has he said and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken and shall he not? Will he not make it good? 
In other words, God said what he said. And he's going to do what he said. And he has said it. And he's going to make it good. Why? Because he is not depending on us to do it. We're just the vessel. It's kind of like making Kool-Aid. You know, you have water, sugar, and a Kool-Aid packet. You don't depend on the pitcher to make it sweet. Oh, that's a good. Oh, that's oh, teach the night Holy Ghost. That's good. You don't depend on that pitcher to make that Kool-Aid sweet. You don't. 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 You depending on the sugar to make the tea, I mean the sugar, I mean to make the Kool-Aid, excuse me, sweet. You're not dependent on that, I'm going to say it again, you don't depend on the picture to make it sweet. I mean, God does not depend on us to do his part. Really? No. He does not depend on you to do his part. He expects you to do your part. You're the vessel. Pastor talked about it, I guess, what, two Sundays ago, coming on nearby. You know, the, the scripture says that we're a treasure in an earthen vessel. That means you're precious jewels, jewel in a clay jar is a picture I can give you. Or even you saying even in a plastic picture, which means you're in something that's not really going to protect something of the value that you are. And God is not depending on you to make everything come to pass. He's depending on you doing your part. He's depending on you doing your portion. He's depending on you believing. He's depending on you doing what he tells you to do. But again, you don't depend on the picture to make it sweet. I make a half and half um, tea slash uh, lemonade, everything. I mix the two together, put X amount of sugar in there. But I don't depend on the bottles of the picture to make it sweet. I depend on the sugar to make it good. And you got to stir it up. Do you, I have to do my part, but I'm not depending on the vessel to make it sweet. I'm not depending on the vessel to make it good. And I want to say to somebody tonight, quit trying to be God. If God tell you to let me have it, let me deal with it, let me do it, I'm going to do it. Get your hand off of it, leave it alone. You know, God says there are many different ways. Walk away from it, step off from it. I got this one, this one on me. You sit down, let me do it. I got this one. However God said that to you, that's the same thing. I hear him saying tonight, you did your part. Hmm. And that's very liberating. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody needs to say hallelujah right there to open their spirit to receive that. That you did your part. And quit carrying guilt behind that. You did what you were supposed to do. And I have learned sometimes you can do your part. You can live the way you're supposed to live. You can live the teaching that you've been taught. You can exercise the teaching that you've been taught. You can walk in the teaching that you've been taught. You can be obedient to God. You can do what God told you to do. You can believe what God told you to believe. And you can do all those things and it still don't work out. So how do I categorize that? Where do I put that? How am I supposed to live with that? Well, you just have to say, Lord, I was obedient and I did my part. And go on with your life. <laughs> I'm gonna say that again. You did your part. I, yeah, you did your part. Well, I just felt like I didn't really live up to my potential. And I didn't really do. I'm going to say it again. You did your part. Thus said the Lord. That make you feel better when I had thus said the Lord on it. That for somebody on tonight. You did your part. And sometimes that's all you have to hold on to is that you did your part who help me holy ghost while i talk you did your part say it again you did your part again you did your part man i want but it didn't work <laughs> that did not mean that does not mean that you did not do what you were supposed to do I just told you all the different things that you can do in the course of whatever you're in a relationship, business, finance, or whatever, and it still does not work. It's okay. That's sometimes the way life goes. Because if nothing else, it teaches you grace. If nothing else, it teaches you mercy. How? 
because it lets you know that it's not always going to be a formula. It's not going to always come out exactly like you thought it would. Now, that does not mean that good will not return to you, and that good is not yours, and that harvest is not coming to you. That's not what it means. That's not what that means. That's, that's not, that, that, that is not what it means. Well, Pastor, they lied on me. They lied on Jesus Christ. That's what they taught me and put on the chat. They, they sure said, I like them saying, well, they said, they, they lied. They say, look, they lied on Jesus Christ, and they ain't told no lie. That is the truth. They did lie on Jesus Christ. And what did he still do? I must work the works of him that sent me. While is the day for the night come when no man or woman can work? There it is. I, I still got to be about my father's business. You still have to be about your father's business. What father? God the father. I'm not talking about your natural father. I'm talking about God's business. Loving people, letting people know that Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus prospers. Still talking about God can. God is not limited to your ability. You know, I mean, come on. What, why would you want a God like that if he can only do what you can do? What I'm going to serve you for if you can only do what I can do? Where is the admiration is that in that? Why would I worship you? Why would I praise you for that if you can do what I can do? I, that means I, I just do, do it myself. No, I need a God that, that, that can do more than I can, that can go places I can't go, do things I can't do, say things I can't say, see in places I can't see, <laughs> say my name in places I can't say, protect me in ways I can't protect myself. That's the kind of God, and that's the kind of God that you need, and if you're saved, that's the kind of God that you have. Genesis 41, 32, and for that dream, was doubling up to Pharaoh twice. In other words, Pharaoh dreamed the same dream twice. And this is Pharaoh. So this is happening over there in black Africa. And this is the black Pharaoh. It is because the thing is established by God. And God will shortly bring it to pass. Spirit of God say it's on the way. Somebody need to type that in the comments. It's on the way. See, we read earlier, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should, should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? In other words, he's, he's going to do it. And if God has told you to get out the way, I got it. Let him do what he do. Let God be God and every man alive. And say, look at this, Genesis 50, 24. You're looking at proof text. And God said unto his brothers, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. He said, I know God coming back to get y'all and take y'all from this part of Africa to this other part of Africa. In other words, he's going to bring y'all from Egypt over to Canaan, which is the promised land. He's going to take you from one, one set of black people were to the promised land of Canaan, which where another set of black people were. He said, I know that's going to happen. He said, I have no doubt in my mind. He said, brothers, I know I'm going to die. He said, but when God come and get y'all, don't leave me over here, even though I'm just going to be bones. Find my bones and take me where y'all going. Well, God said that he was going to take Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which is his father, Jacob, his grandfather, Isaac, and great-grandfather, Abraham. Because why? He believed. That's why I tell you, when you believe, and you see this over 400 years later, Moses went, got Joseph's bones, and they carried them with them to the promised land. Why? Because everybody kept repeating <laughs> what Joseph had said he wanted done with his bones. After they started to lead to the promised land where God visited them, where God delivered them. Genesis 7, 20. More of the Lord, your God will send the hornet among them until they are left and hide themselves from you. Be destroyed. This is where I like to say God will use the natural elements to work on your behalf to defeat your enemy. But what you mean he'll do that? Sometimes it's just keeping somebody at home because they want to act a fool with you the next day at your job. Oh, you don't think God moves like that? I'm here to tell you he will and he does. See, that's why I tell you God can if you lean on God, if you depend on God. And believe that God can and know that he will, you can see all kind of good things happen in your life. And yes, you're going to still have challenges. We don't preach a Mickey Mouse gospel. Oh, yes, it's going to be all peaches and cream and just beds of roses and poses and lilies. It's going to be wonderful. No, 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 no. Man born of a woman, but a few days and then are still full of trouble. You're going to have some problems, but 
when you trust God and know that God can and will deliver, I guarantee you, you will have some experiences with God that no man can explain and no man can take credit for. What does that mean? He will do some unusual stuff in your life to let you know that he's real. I mean, I can tell you testimony. I can tell you, I was, you know, when I was nine years old, the first time I saw a marching band, I guess I was about five, six years old, somewhere in there, because Ken Fogg and them, I think they graduated like 87, 84, somewhere in there. I'm not really sure. I kind of get blurry on that. But I remember going to the Battle of Bands in Dallas, Texas, and that song, Word Up by Cameo, was real popular at this time, so I am dating myself there. Lord have mercy. That's been almost 40 years ago. Jesus from a shining world in glory. But I went there. And I said, man, if I ever get the drum major in my life, this is what I'm going to do. Because I was so inspired by the sound and the sights of the band and them doing their thing. I think that was Roosevelt High School. Shout out to, to the neighborhood, Old Cliff, back in the day. They used to get down, on, you know, doing their thing. And fast forward to my high school years, ninth grade. I'm going to show you how God be tying things around. Ninth grade. Uh, well, right before night, right the summer, my mama, rest her soul, my mama was like, Ruby, you need to be practicing the drums. You don't never know. Ruby, you need to be practicing. Man, whatever. I'm not trying to hear that. I ain't say that, but you know, my mind, I couldn't talk crazy like that. She'd be like, you know, told dad I'm like, get slid or something like that. What you mean, slid? You know, slapped or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't play with that man like that. That man was 5'11 and, and tall and hands like big as two as mine. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good on that. But I didn't say that out loud, but in my thinking, I did. Lo and behold, my cousin goes to college. He had been playing that summer when we got to set the drums. Daddy just about to set a drum for the church. First time we had drums. And this is like 1990. Yeah, 1990. Uh, yeah, fall 1990. School just started or whatever. And my cousin, my, his mama, who's my cousin, playing the organ. You know, and I'm sitting there doing audio like I do. You know, been, you know, fooling with audio X many years at that particular point. You know, started off. You know, recording. Dad, when I was eight years old on the recorder, then I started recording them on my boombox. Just trying to tell you how God weaves all this different stuff together. Gresh and say, Ruben, get on the organ. I mean, get on the drum. What? Get on the drum. I mean, she just nodded her head. Get on the drum. Like, okay, yeah, we're going to see how this goes and learn how to play drums right there in church. You know, we play at the church and stuff like that. You know, with Ken Folk and them in Houston or whatever. We was at friendship sometimes at the church, you know, messing around and stuff after he leave or whatever. But, Never many years I really thought I was going to be playing like that. So that's ninth grade. You know, we started playing, started playing with her, you know, playing for praise and worship, playing for the choir and all this other stuff. And uh, Rum C.H. Gerald, you know, good friend of my dad, he comes over with his choir. And, and the organist, like, you know, we, we you know, I've just, I haven't been that long playing. I don't know if I had played three Sundays yet. You know, and I played for us and, you know, just did my little best or whatever. <laughs> and I was getting out drums and go sit down. I didn't even have no stool yet. I was playing on the old, uh, old, uh, what, organ bench. It was like a little short organ bench, a little short piano bench thing that I, I was actually playing on or whatever. I ain't had no stool yet. And I was getting off. And old boy was like, hey, man, you ain't going to play for us? I was like, what? Like, who, me? Like, dude, I don't even play that good yet. I ain't even been playing this long yet. Okay, now all this is inside of God's house. I'm going somewhere with a stay with the store. So, you know, I'm like, oh, all right, cool. Yeah, sure. So I stay on there, you know, you know, play with them to the best of my ability. He didn't say I was bad, so I guess I was okay. So I'm like, okay, that's good. You know, that boosted my confidence. I'll pray, Jesus. All right, you know, good day. You know, played through 10th grade year. And then junior year, you know, I transferred back to my home school. Cool, no big deal. No big deal. I decided, hey, when I had to pick my skills, I said I wanted to learn to read music. Okay, I've been playing <laughs> drum for two years at this particular point, you know, at the church. You know what I'm saying? Doing my thing. And I was like, man, I need to, yeah, I want to learn to read music. So I got to begin a band. All right. So, you know, first day of school, stand up, introduce yourself. My name is Ruben Samson. You know, what instrument you play? Uh, or what instrument you want to learn to play? And, you know, what you want to do? You know, my name is Ruben Sounds. I play drums. He said, you play drums. And this is my band director, Moises Molina. This man is a real live person. Well, was a real live person. He, he's passed and I went on to be with the Lord, actually, my senior year. But that's another story. Uh, real live person. Got a whole school named after him in, in Dallas, Texas. Out there in Oak Cliff. Real live school. You know. Uh, he's like, oh, yeah. 
Okay, so he put on a tape. He said, I right, played it. He put me on a drum and said, Play to this. He was like, Okay, all right, cool. Now, I got in the class to learn to read music. But he was like, No, nah, I'm going to put you in the marching band. I said, All right, okay, cool. You know, no, no big deal. All right, all right, cool. We're going to do that. So he put me in first period band, and I still had fifth period band, which was beginning band. No big deal or whatever. You know, was in the section, learned how to play the music and stuff, and the cadences and all this other kind of stuff, and all that was a whole new world for me. Learning the commands and, you know, how to drill and stuff, all these other things. Messing around one day, we fooling around in the band hall like we do some sometimes, messing around. And I messed around and, and had a drumstick, and I had been practicing, you know, doing the back then. And lo and behold, some type of weight. I still don't know how that man saw me to this day because <laughs> we just cut up like you're doing a band all sometimes using the band, you know, shout out to the band boys and girls. You know, I was just messing around and I did the back band and he saw it. He's like, huh? He said, you can do that? I said, yes, yeah, sir. He said, let me see you do it again. So I did it again. He said, all right, I want you to do that Saturday. What? Now you got to understand this wasn't a show style band. I just transferred into the school not even two months ago. And we finna go to the whole great big old battle of the bands in the great city of Dallas. Now you gotta understand the Dallas crowd is real hard on the band. He said, I want you to do that Saturday. So here I am doing the back band in Oak Cliff in front of this whole crowd, in front of this band. Don't know how to blow the whistle, none of this other stuff in front of all these people. And what I do? The back then with a drumstick didn't even have a mace but doing it fast forward i became co-drum major toward the end of that season and then the next year drum major by myself still couldn't read music that adequate at this particular point but was made drum major i said all that to say this when we believe Many times, God will take some random thought that we think is a random thought. God will take us and put us in position to do something that we didn't know that God can and will do to teach us a lot of things. And the Lord just told me not too long, like, Lord, you know, you sure you put your boy in a, a funny spot and they want to bash me. He said, yeah. He said, but I need you to have a good, strong exposure leadership for yourself and how you can get ahead and be in a place without you having to go through channels and all this other kind of stuff. See, God taught me all of that. I didn't say I prayed for it. I ain't say I asked God for it. I'm in a band hall messing around with something I taught myself how to do. Just playing. It, you, just doing what you do as a teenager. You see something, oh, I want to try it and I did it and was successful with it. And lo and behold, God allowed me, gave me the opportunity to do something that I wanted to do when I was nine years old, and I ain't think God even paid attention to no stuff like that in no child, ever no nine-year-old boy. But he has taught me so many things out of that experience. That's why I said God is not limited to our ability. Pastor, that was a long story. Yes, it was a long story, but you get the point now. That if you can believe God, if you can walk with God, have a relationship with God, be his child, he will give you those same type and or kinds of experiences where you know it was only him. Because the truth of the matter, if I'd have been there all four years and made drum majors and I had marched all four years, been a good band student and knew all the music, how to read and all that kind of stuff, I would have been bragging on myself. But even to this day, I still have to say it was nobody but God. that put me in front of that man to be able to play, that I play drums at church and God used that to push everything on through and that was a part of my destiny that I knew it not. Something that means small and insignificant. You know, ain't nobody get saved from it. But that's what God did for me and God wants you to have those same type and all kind of experiences on tonight. So no matter where you find yourself on tonight, God can and he will and he also desires to have a relationship with you. You were running 35. That then the Lord would turn your captivity. Ooh. He'll turn the trouble that you're in. He would turn what has you captured, what has you trapped, what has you locked in, what has you caged, and have compassion on you 
and will return and gather you from all the nations where the Lord your God has scattered you. In other words, God will bring you back to himself. <laughs> Man, that's cold. He said, he say the Lord will turn your captivity. He will bring you out his own dear self with his own hand and will have compassion on you. In other words, he's going to say, that's my baby. He coming back with me. That's my girl. She coming back to me and will return and will gather you from all the nations. No matter what means, wherever you end up on the planet, wherever you end up in your situation, good, bad, or indifferent, God will bring you back to himself. And he will bring you out. That's why I say tonight that God can. Not he might. Not he going to think about it. Not he got to check his Palm Pilot. He got to check his Google Calendar. He got to check his Microsoft Outlook. He got to look at his paper calendar. He got to check with his secretary, his executive assistant. I say God can and he will come and see about you and bring you out. I told you God liked to show out. I told you he walked across the water. What was the point of that? Who? Ain't nobody get saved from that. And I ain't hating on God. I'm not trying to downplay what he did, but God liked to show. I mean, the Bible says he meted the world with a span, which means he made the world with his pinky finger. This right here. That's what he made the world with. Of course, we know it's allegory. He didn't actually use his finger, but he spoke it into existence. But that he can do that, that he has that much power, that that's all it takes for him is to use his your weakest, your weakest finger is what he used to make the world and you think that your problem is too hard for God I'm here to tell you tonight that it's not your problem is not too hard for God I don't ooh, I don't care what it looked like what it was what it is what you have don't have what you need don't need what you got don't got that's bad grammar but I said it and it's communicating God can and will do it for you your situation is not too strong for God it's not too powerful for God it's not if God can speak to a storm Peace be still. Y'all chill out. That's literally what he says. And the winds and the wave got some act right. And just like. Like nothing ever happened. So much so the disciples asked, who is he? Who, who, what kind of a man is it that even the winds and the wave obey him? And God want to move like that in your life where people can't understand or figure out how you got to where you are or how you have what you have or how he took you and brought you out of the trouble that you were in. He's still doing it. Even in 2023, Jesus Christ desired to have a relationship with you. You haven't gone too far. You haven't done too much. You haven't experienced too much. I can't make it any, any, any plainer for you. God is not a man. You read it, we read it earlier. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is the son of man that he's going to repent. He's not going to change his mind. He wants to be in your life. He's not going to leave you hanging. He's not going to tell you to get ready to go. And he's not going to show up on Saturday. He's not going to tell you to pack your bag. And he never show up. He's not going to tell you I'm going to bring you to Chuck E. Cheese or Showbiz or Main Event or, or Dave and Buster's or uh, or wherever you like to go, Astro World or Splash Town, whatever you into, he's not gonna promise to take you to those places and then act like nothing happened when he don't show up. That's not who God is. <laughs> That's not who God. If if he said it, he would do. It. The scripture said, "Have I not said it? And shall I not do it? We just read it. Shall I not make it good?" That's the God that I serve, and I'm inviting you to invite him into your life because he desires to have a relationship with you on tonight. And the way that you receive him is by faith, which means you got to believe, man. Well, how do I believe him? You just have to believe that he's real and he exists and that he is who he says that he is and that he can do what he said that he will do. So we believe with the heart. Not talking about the one in your rib cage. We're talking about your spirit, man. That's the eternal part of your being. And then you say with your mouth that you believe that Jesus Christ died and got up again for you. And he hung, bled, and died and shed his blood for your sins so that you could be a new creature. So he said, yes. I desire, I want to be saved on tonight. Or maybe you want to come back to God. Maybe you're already saved. You're already being water baptized. But you're like, man, you know what? Look, I, I, I need to come back to God. I ain't got too far out there. I got to come back. This ain't me. Things too crazy. And this ain't even how I get down in my life. I need to come back to God. So this stuff will settle down because I know God's the one that was keeping me in an even place, keeping me in a good place. And I'm not at that good place because I know God is not... I'm not with God like I'm supposed to be. Come back to God. And we pray one prayer for, prayer for both of those things, to receive him as Savior and to come back to him. It's one prayer. Again, it's one prayer. 
So if you desire, you want, you need to be saved on tonight, you want to come back to God on tonight, desire to come back to God on tonight, this is the prayer that we pray that we pray and we ask that you repeat it after me in a prayer and say, Dear God, I know without Jesus Christ, I am lost. I believe your word that says, if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. I now invite the Lord Jesus Christ into my life and receive you by faith as my Lord and Savior. I am sorry for my sins and I thank you for your forgiveness. Jesus Christ, you are my Lord. I am now a new creature in Christ and a child of God. Thank you for saving me in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And just like that, you're saved on tonight. Very simple. Now this is what I ask you to do. If you got saved on tonight and you're there in the comments, type, I'm saved. I got saved on tonight. If you want more information about being saved and we can send you scriptures about being saved to reassure you or, or, or show you why through the word of God that you're saved, just inbox us. And we can inbox it back to you, or you can um, simply email, I mean, inbox your email address, excuse me, and we can get that information to you that way. But we encourage you to get water baptized, which is, I was sure, if you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then we encourage you to become a part of a church. You need to belong to a church. Now, I understand, you know, since the pandemic and stuff, we had, a, you know, the electronic church thing going, the virtual church going, thing going, I have no problem with that, I have no issue with that. But you need a pastor. You need a, a, a church that you call home where you can be part of a faith-filled community where you can learn about God, learn who he is, learn his plan and desire for your life and how God expects us to live. You need that. We call it a church. You need to become a part of a church. If you desire uh, to become an electronic member, you can do that. Amen. We do. Um, Hold on, I'm trying to find something right here to post the link for you. Uh oh. Uh oh. Can't spell. I'm posting the link right now for you. If you desire to commit to being an e member, because you may be too far, but you want to be a part of what God is doing uh, in our church. We love to be your pastor. We love to see you overcoming your challenges. Winning in life. That's what that means, overcoming challenges. Winning in life. You being victorious. You're not giving up. You're not punking out. You're seeing that God will help you to get over, get through, get under, whatever you want to call it in your life. God really will help you like that. Just visit that link there that I just posted. Click on it. Fill out the contact information, and we'll get with you about, contact you about being a member of our church, electronic member of our church. So it doesn't matter, you know, people are members of churches all the way in Africa and here in America and vice versa. Why? Because social media has opened up the door for us to be able to go into places we wouldn't have ever been able to go in. I mean, people as far as India, Mexico, Africa are watching uh, these Facebook Lives on Sunday and Wednesday. Now, this is what also I want to encourage you to do. Read your Bible from Genesis all the way through Revelation as well, okay? Because that way you'll know what the Word of God says for yourself. And you find out who God is for yourself. You'll know who Jesus is for yourself and who the Holy Spirit is for yourself as well. Now, if you desire to be spirit-filled on tonight, you can be spirit-filled. It's still a gift for the body of Christ. It doesn't matter your denomination persuasion. Jesus Christ desires to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And it's a tool that you need in your toolkit, on your spiritual tool belt. <laughs> In your weapon arsenal to fight the devil, whatever you want to call it, you need it. And it's a gift of the Spirit. And it's evidence is shown by when you speak in a language you haven't been taught to speak in before. So this is what I, what I want to do. If you want to receive the Spirit on tonight, I mean, you want to see the Spirit of God, be baptized with the Holy Ghost, baptized with the Holy Spirit. All those are still the same, just said it three different ways. This is what I ask you to do. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that the Spirit of God fills you with His, his Spirit and then that you release your prayer language. So let's do that this time. Grace, Heavenly Father, God, we thank you on tonight for your presence and your power. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who desire to be spirit-filled on tonight, that you will fill them with your Holy Spirit, God, the Father, the Holy Ghost, 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 the Father, the Holy Ghost. Come into them right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and fill them 
And Father, thank you that you speak those words to them, O Heavenly Father, and they release their prayer language on tonight. They say, Thiri, O Boy, Shek, Yaba, Sel, Tori, Yaba, Sate, No Mo, Kori, Yaba, Sate, Yo, So, To, To, Bo. Hina, Na, Yaba, Sate, Yo, So, To, Ro, Ia, Ka, Ya, Sate, No, No Mo, Shi, Ya, Ka, Ya, Sate, Bo. Get to the Ro, Bo, Shi, Ya, Ka, Ya, Sate. Now, whatever it is that you hear, you have to speak it out. It may sound like jibber jabber or gibberish, the first word that you hear, but you continue to speak that out, and over time, you'll develop a language like you heard me just praying in at the end of my prayer that I prayed in English. So before I let you go, this is what I'm gonna ask you to do. It's not the will of God for you to hurt, to be in pain, or have aches, or any of those things. It's the will of God that you be healed. So be healed on tonight. The presence and power of God is on me to heal you on tonight. I'm not the healer, nope. I'm just the vessel that he flows through. So if you decide to be healed on tonight, this is what I ask you to do. Just stretch your hands toward the screen that you're looking at with your cell phone screen, telephone screen, uh, cell phone screen, tablet screen, your TV screen, if you're you know, projecting onto the screen or projecting on your wall or whatever the case may be, just stretch your hands toward that just as a sign of, yes, I want to be healed on tonight. Nothing matters about my hands. They just brown on both sides. Brown is red on this side and brown on that side. And we're going to pray and get an agreement that you are healed and be that you are healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So stretch your hands this way. Gracious Heavenly Father, God, thank you that the healing, healing, cooling power of your anointing flows over and through all of your people, God, there is no distance in the spirit, so we speak healing on tonight to your people, healing to their minds, healing to their hearts, O oh, Heavenly Father, God. Thank you, God, that you're taking those stony hearts and giving them fresh flesh hearts in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, O oh, Heavenly Father. You're replacing their stubbornness with a willingness to obey you, Heavenly Father, God. We thank you that the blood vessels, veins, and arteries are open and flow freely. We come against gout right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come against gout being in, in people's toes on tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Heavenly Father God. The fire of the Holy Ghost, 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 the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost permeates every cell, every ligament, every joint. We curse out the right and say it is root in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We curse cancer that is root. Be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. From the crown of the head to the soles of their feet, O oh, Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for manifesting healing in their bodies right now. And God, we thank you for miracles on tonight. We thank you for signs and wonders on these, your people. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Hallelujah. Bless God on tonight. Now look, now look, 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 now look. Sunday, we're going to be here on Facebook Live at 8.30 a.m. Because we start with prayer. You can pray along with us. Uh, hear the word of God. Praise and worship. All those good things are going to be on Facebook Live. But it's nothing like seeing it in person for yourself. Come and experience the power of God, the presence of God. We're located at 1180 Washington Boulevard, corner of Washington Victoria. It's a tall brown cathedral building. You can't miss it. And look, we're going to have church. You're going to get the word of God, and you're still going to get home in time to watch the Cowboys. The Lord of God. Hey, Pastor, you a Cowboy fan? I most certainly are. Amen. So, yes, it's, it's okay to, to love God and, you know, have a sports team that you enjoy viewing and stuff. There ain't nothing wrong with that. You're not going to hell because you like sports. Don't put your sports in front of God, of course, but you're not going to hell for that. So go Cowboys on ours. <laughs> so we thank God for your presence here tonight. If you haven't done so, please share this Facebook Live to your news feed so others can hear the word of God on tonight. If you're not uh, following or haven't liked our Facebook play page, please do so. Uh, so that you can get the updates when we go live and you can see it and view it for yourself. We thank God for your support. And we also ask if you desire to support the ministry, you can visit our website, www.gtclc.org slash giving. And you can also give through Cash App, all capital letters, dollar sign, capital G, capital T, capital C, capital F, capital C. Now, we're to the end of tonight's word Wednesday. So as you go tell the word about Jesus Christ and tell them about his love, let them know that Jesus saves, Jesus heals, and Jesus prospers. We'll see you Sunday morning at 8.30 a.m. We bid you peace, knowledge, and blessings that your life and your loved ones and your residence and the works of your hands are covered with the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We'll see you Sunday morning. God bless you.